Okay, in this video, we are going to complete the second part to the um, shading perspective worksheet. And this is what we did yesterday it was the box that resembled the one below it. And you'll notice that the tube, winding tube, is pointing over here, meaning we need to do this one over here. Well, I'm going to start with the top portion of this, and I'm going to end this in the bottom right corner. So I'm going to add a vanishing point over here. And because the name tag here has kind of interfered, we're not going to um, line it up exactly straight across, but it's going to be awfully close. So if I measure this, I'm going to find that that top of the tube is about one inch. So over here in the top portion, right underneath the, the word name, I am going to put a one inch line going across like this. And this is the width of the tube. But actually this tube is made, the top part is what we call an ellipse, all right? An ellipse is something that you see like a circle from the side like this. Circle seed straight on is gonna look like this, but when we see it from the side, it looks like that. So this line represents how wide that ellipse is going to be. And so I'm gonna try and make it as symmetrical as possible by going around and making the opening of the tube, all right? Then I'm going to map out where the other parts are to this um, winding object. For example, the first loop-de-loo that comes around, if I line up my ruler from the top of it, I can draw a line across, and I know that that very top part is going to be over here somewhere. I know that as I come down the bottom of that loop, if I've got my ruler lined up correctly, is going to be somewhere here. All right, and again, I'm trying to make this as accurate as possible. So as I begin this, I'm going to want come down. We could get even more accurate, but I'm going to do some um, sketching and erasing as needed. So I'm going to come down and meet up with this line right here. All right, I'm going to do this on this side also. And you notice that it goes from wide to skinny, and it does it pretty quickly here. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to go wide to skinny and then it, this loop comes around and I've got about an inch space over here from the edge so going over an inch is right about here so I have to come around and I'm going to hit the top part right here I know that it overlaps the front of the tube or excuse me the front of the tube overlaps the back of it and I'm going to stop and look at it once more and say, okay, now, can I get the inside of that in that area? If I sketch it in, does that look about right? All right, this is definitely a trial and error thing. All right, so, so far so good. It doesn't, you know, I can stop and erase and change, but I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. And so this comes around, and as we know, it's got to end up over here at the vanishing point here. So I'm going to come here, and it's pretty skinny, pretty consistent skinny for a long portion until it gets close to that vanishing point, and then it comes to kind of a point. All right, once you think you have it done, then it's going to be a matter of shading. And inside of the, the tube here, let's stop for a second here. All right, so kind of getting back to this, I'm going to go ahead and shade the inside dark on the left and dark on the right. And you can see in this example, a lot of this shading is done in line form. It's not real um, blended. You can see quite a bit of the lines, and I purposely left it that way. I'll ask you to kind of do the same thing to leave lines. The inside of this tube is where it's going to be the lightest, and on the portion over here, you can see lines coming down, kind of following the curve. Put a bunch of these in. And then to make it darker, I'm going to do what's called cross hatching. I'm going to come across this way. I'm going to make sure my lines are all different lengths. I don't want them to be exactly the same because that's how we get the light and dark areas. And I'm going to keep building up with these lines that go across and these lines that go down following the curve until I get something like this. You'll notice, and I, I have a little more to go on this, but you'll notice that the curve coming around on the inside is also dark. So I'm going to have some curves that come around, curving this way, and then some curves that go down or around this way. That cross-hatching technique is going to be seen here. 
And then here I've got, you know, a little bit of cross hatching, but I've just got a lot of long lines that are pretty dense filling in that area. And so that is the process you'll take when you complete step number two of this shading perspective worksheet.